All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we are going to be diving into Synology's requirement to have their own hard drives for some models. And I wanna talk about pretty much what this means and how this all works. And there's been some huge changes to this recently with DSM 7.1, where they've really taken a step back. And we've now gotten a good look at the Synology 2022 lineup. And so now we have a clear picture of what it's gonna be like going forward and how to tell what is required by what whenever you're looking at products on Synology, because it can be honestly really confusing. I do also want to tackle some misinformation that I also help spread, which is the fact that Synology is never actually fully required, if that makes sense, the drives to be Synology drives. Even on the upper echelon units, technically, no matter what drives you stuck in a system, they would always work. It's just you wouldn't have smart data. I actually got this wrong and I spread this wrong in that I understood Synology would not even let you make a volume in some cases, but it turns out that it was just poor wording that made it very difficult to make a volume and kind of got you away from that. So some things I'd seen in forums were in fact wrong and I actually spread some wrong information. TLDR, you could always technically make a volume, though it would be a huge pain. All right, and so now I wanna take a step back and talk about what this is. So about a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago now, Synology started requiring the use of Synology branded hard drives. These are actually Toshiba drives that Synology is like co-made firmware for to actually use on Synology systems. And so essentially what it is, is pretty much all the upper echelon units, anything above eight bays is subject to this rule. If you're below eight bays or have eight bays, so let's just call it nine bays. If you're nine bays or above, you have to have the Synology hard drives. And if you're eight bays or below, you do not have to. And when I say have to, it is very, very, very suggested to. I'm gonna show you the wording and help you understand exactly what that means for you. But the reason they did that is twofold. The reason they say, and I actually do understand, is the fact that they can guarantee that hard drives will have their own firmware, will never have an issue with Synology. This actually stemmed from an issue with some Seagate Ironwolf drives where for some reason, Seagate Ironwolf drives that had made it onto Synology's compatibility list started having issues because Seagate released a firmware update, started shipping new drives with new firmware that somehow broke compatibility with certain Synology NASs and those drives. And so I personally had a client who had this issue and so that's the reason they're saying that they're requiring these drives is they want to make sure that they have total control over the firmware and everything to make sure they never have a compatibility issue. And for enterprise customers, I totally get that. And so I actually think that that's probably one of the leading reasons why they started down this path is because it was right about the same time that started happening was about probably a year later is when they introduced this. And so the time frame kind of does match up there. And so then what I think happened is, I think they approach a bunch of companies and the companies are like, unless you can guarantee X amount of orders, we're not gonna take you. And so I think Synology then took a step back and said, okay, well, if we wanna make this happen, we've got to start requiring the use of drives for the enterprise customers. And so it's partially gonna be that, and partially it makes a lot of money for them. Not necessarily just profit, they're probably not even really pulling a ton of profit from that, but for market, actually just revenue, money you're pulling in is huge. And so by pretty much tripling in some cases, the amount they're pulling in, their revenue from selling a massive NAS, that is very good for their overall market look, even though they might not necessarily be profiting a ton off of these drives. All right, and so that's kind of why it happened. It's up to you on whether or not you wanna keep supporting Synology. I personally am going to because they do make a good product and I think they are head and shoulders above any other NAS operating system out there for a lot of use cases. But one of their key advantages that they used to have that they no longer have was just bring your own drives and never having to worry about that. For consumers, it's never gonna be a problem and we're gonna talk about that here. But for enterprise users, it's something to think about. All right, and so now that we've talked about how it happened and what it was, let's talk about how it was enforced. So back on DSM-6 and 7.0, Essentially, the way this was enforced was quite heavy handed. If you did buy a unit that required the drives, and once again, I'm, in a minute here, I'm gonna talk about the exact wording to tell when they're required and when they're suggested. 
it would have this massive flag in there and it would say storage pool critical. So it would allow you to build the pool, but it would not give you smart data and your pool, no matter what, would always be critical, which meant if you actually ever did lose a drive, you would not even know because your storage pool was already critical. And so that was very heavy handed. And it meant that I really did not ship clients with hard drives with compatibility issues for Synologies. I would buy old units, I would do anything for my clients just because it's a huge cost to associate it with that. If you can buy some cheaper hard drives and kind of work the market and find what's cheap, you're sometimes paying 50 to 80% more for the Synology branded drive than the cheaper Seagate Exos if it's available. And so back then I did not allow any of my clients to do that. I would just very much steer them away from it because it was a huge issue. However, they have finally made a huge redirection with DSM 7.1. With DSM 7.1, the drives are now at least usable. The storage pool has gone from critical, red, to being warning, which is orange, which is so much better, believe it or not. It's still annoying and it's still very heavy handed, but is now in a place where it, I would consider it usable, honestly, in the fact that now if a hard drive goes bad, you know it because your storage pool goes red. And so it's a lot better. And it also now brings back smart data. Smart data was the other sticking point for me that made it unusable completely without the Synology branded drives. Because if you don't have smart data, you don't know when a drive is about to fail. And so by taking that step back, I still wish they would not have enforced this, but you have to give Synology some credit by pulling back, even though it was probably the market telling them to do it, at least they did listen to that and have really reduced it down to now it's not horrible to use non-Synology drives on a Synology system that requires them. So it's gotten a lot better. It still has a lot to go, but at least it's not going to completely shut you down and make the NAS unusable essentially. All right, and so that's kind of where we're at. And I would love to know what people's experiences have been with this and how important it was for them. I mean, it's a large cost most certainly. And so I would love to know people who actually switched over to a, NAS, a different NAS provider and how their experience have been with that in the comments below. All right, so now that we've talked about that, let's talk about figuring out exactly what the rules are. And we've got some good news. So Synology has recently unveiled their 2022 lineup for a lot of units. And specifically, if we look at their rack mounted storage system and we look at the RS822 Plus, it actually has a lot of information here because this unit does not require Synology hard drives. If you look at it and we look at specs, we get to see the key information here. We can go down here and this note right here means that it does not require use of Synology hard drives. But you can see that Synology is actually allowing other drives for those smaller units. So this is a rack mounted unit, which screams business to me, and they are not requiring use of those hard drives on there. And so that gives me a lot of hope. So we can pretty safely say that if you are eight bays or below, you are not going to be required to use Synology's drives. And that's actually a pretty good line in my opinion. If you have over eight bays, you are in the 1% of Synology users, I guess maybe the 10%, who knows. But that is a good line to me because I don't think a lot of just regular home users are having more than eight bays. And I think that's an okay place to be because it still gives your 18, 21 plus. You know that's safe. And so we know that in the future, Synology is not going to be requiring them, at least as far as we can tell from the projections today, that Synology will not be requiring them for the smaller units, which makes me feel a lot better. And so now let's look at the two different ways to tell what the unit is. And another confusing thing is, you need to check what your language settings are. So Synology and most sites have it. If you look at the web right here, you can see that this is the English-US. The English-US has a different word for it than the English slash global. So you might have to check both. But now let's go into and check out a device that requires the use of Synology drives. So let's go at the high scalability. This guy is certainly going to require it, the 60 bay unit, which is awesome. If we read this, 
it will say this. It is strongly recommended that you only install drives on your compatibility list. Storage pool and volume creation process may fail when using unverified drives. That statement right there for the English US site means that the Synology drives are going to be required and you're going to be getting that warning status if you're not using Synology drives. But now let's go to the N global. So now we go into the English global setting and we can see that right here, this is the other note that is the global settings. This is the note that mean that says, yes, we require Synology drives. So for the global settings, if you see, Synology only guarantees full functionality, reliability, and performance for Synology drives listed on the compatibility list. The use of non-validated components may limit search and functions and result in data loss and system instability. So that statement is the exact same thing as the US one. And if you see that, it means you certainly are required to use Synology drives if you want to get all the features. Now, obviously you'll still be able to use it and you will get smart data, which I'm really glad they put back, but it will still be very annoying and a sore thumb and they're not going to support you. I wish they had just said, we're not going to support businesses who use non-Synology drives for these units. I think that would have been a better place but at least now it's it's usable i don't know I, I go back and forth on what i feel about it but that's the wording you need to see to tell if your device actually requires use of synology drives or not because that is the only words that i found if you put a drive that is not on the compatibility list and it does not have this wording it will just say hey it's not on the compatibility list and it's going to let you create the storage volume and everything will be fine but if it's got this note, it means that you have to use them or it's going to put the storage pool to warning and you're going to get all those things. Finally, there is a way to kind of circumvent this by SSHing in and actually changing the compatibility list that I've seen people do. If you've already got the drives and you're kind of that tinker, go for it. It seems to work pretty well and I've seen most people not have any issues with it, but just know you might run into some weird issues and definitely wait before any upgrade you have to make sure that's not going to have any issues. All right, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I kind of wanted to just talk about what the future looks like and kind of now that we really have understanding of what happened and what they've done, I wish they did not require you to use this deciphering text of like, that's going to require it. That's not going to require it. And instead we're much more upfront about it and really said exactly what their intentions were. But, at least now we know which units are require it and which units are not. That's going to be it for this video. Go and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to me make in the comments below and really what your opinions on are at this because I think a lot of people have mixed opinions and I don't think it's as big of a deal as some people have made it out to be. And go ahead and leave those in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.